Assalamu alaikum. Faces of Muhammad by John Tolin. This book discusses how Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been portrayed in Europe over the centuries. The image of the Prophet has varied widely from being polemical to being admired as a great leader. When it was polemical, it was often in order to use Islam as a weapon against other Christian sects. 150 years before the Prophet was born, Jerome coined the name Saracens to refer to the descendants of the Biblical Ishmael. He portrays them as idolaters. During early encounters with Muslims, European Christians referred to Jerome's work to understand the Saracens, i.e. Muslims. When they heard the name Muhammad, they assumed it was an idol worshipped by the Saracens. While there are Christian scholars who studied the Quran to combat Islam, many others studied it to find arguments to use against other Christians. They believed that Muhammad's success was due to the corruption within Christianity. The Unitarian Michael Servet turned Muhammad into a reformer that preached the unity of the true God. In 18th century France, Muhammad was likewise used to attack the prerogatives of the Catholic Church. A hostile version of the Prophet's life was forged in the 12th century. From here on, Muhammad was not a golden idol, but a debauched swindler and heretic modeled after false holy men and heresiarchs who challenged the Church. Their portrayal of the Prophet reflected their own concerns about potential charlatans, false reformers and heretics within Christianity, rather than out of curiosity about the Prophet. The authors of Arabic Christian polemical work written in the 10th century Iraq wrote in an attempt to assure Christians that they were following the true religion and to discourage them from converting to Islam by presenting it as a degraded, heretical version of Christianity. When Juan de Segovia heard about the fall of Constantinople, he suggested organized debates between Christian and Muslim intellectuals to persuade Muslims to the truth of Christianity. His goal was to respond with peaceful Christian dialogue instead of violence and to dispel Muslim misconceptions of what Christianity. He wanted to convert Muslims to the Christian faith by pointing out the errors of the Quran and explaining Christian doctrines such as Trinity and Incarnation in order to address Muslim objections to them. In the 16th and 17th centuries, Catholics and Protestants used Prophet Muhammad to speak on him as a rhetorical tool in their polemics against Christian adversaries. They studied the Quran to feed these polemics. Islam's otherness was used as a means of comparing how it is closer to true Christianity than other deviant forms of Christianity. Unitarians used the Quran to attack one of the central doctrines of Christianity, i.e. Trinity. Islam was used to show how other Christian sects were worse than Mahometans. In Martin Luther's opinion, Muslims, who he called the Turks, was the lash and rod of God. God was using Turks to punish Christians, especially the corrupt church, for their sins. In order to defeat the Turks, Christians must make penance. Other Protestants make similar comparisons. The Swiss humanist Theodor Bibliander was ambivalent toward Islam. In his opinion, Muhammad denounced the Jews and affirmed basic truth about Christianity with regards to the virgin birth, Christ as word of God and the Holy Spirit. He eradicated idolatry, banned images and combated heresy. Unlike Martin Luther, Bibliander's opinion is based on his careful study of the Quran. 
His Muhammad was a reformer and a visionary, but one that must be rejected because he does not recognize Christ as the basis of salvation. Facing the threat of being dominated by the Ottoman 16th and 17th century Europeans cannot afford to be indifferent to Islam. The intellectual tools they forged to fight the Ottoman were used against them by dissident Christians, further dividing Christian Europe. Consequently, many Christian Europeans preferred to avoid any real engagement with Islam and to take refuge in traditional medieval legends about their heresies and trickster Muhammad. A Franciscan friar named Makad cites Muhammad as a respectable authority without any polemical caveats. In his opinion, Muhammad and his followers are better than some Catholics in matters concerning the Virgin Mary and those who rejected the doctrine of Immaculate Conception. Did you know that Napoleon Bonaparte considered himself to be a conqueror and legislator who walked in the footsteps of the Prophet? His Muhammad was a model statesman and conqueror who knew how to motivate his troops. As a result, he was a far more successful conqueror than Bonaparte. In 1736, Voltaire wrote a play where he portrayed the prophet as an imposter who was later who was after self-glorification and willing to wage war to get what he wants. Later in life, Voltaire praised the prophet as an effective and tolerant leader and a successful conqueror. Nevertheless, he maintained that Muhammad was not divinely inspired but was so carried away by his success as a leader that he believed himself divinely inspired. It is interesting to see how Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, has been portrayed over the centuries. The early negative depictions were mostly due to ignorance. In fact, the same is true now. As interactions between European Christians and Muslims increased, some scholars made genuine efforts to understand the Quran and the Prophet using Muslim sources, resulting in a more favorable depictions of the Prophet. In the description, there is a link to a talk by the author. You can get this book using the links there. If you like listening to me babbling about books, please subscribe and turn on notification. Thank you.